Every new year needs a new product. Let's make one together. Hi, I'm Ken from KHK Woodworks. In part one of this two-part series, we'll cover the form, fit, and function, guiding the design of a new Shaker-inspired divided carrier. Then we'll make all the required tooling so you can make one of your very own. Customers have frequently asked me for a carrier that would help them organize things like kitchen cutlery, small tools, or craft items that need to be easily transported from one location to the other. The critical dimension in this case is length, 12 and a half inches for the number seven carrier, but the band height should have a lower aspect ratio than the arched handle carriers that I already make, so it really doesn't get too overloaded and heavy. The new design element for this carrier will be its handle. It needs to symmetrically divide the carrier into two equal compartments, giving it balance, and the handle needs to have a graceful and elegant feel. The contour of your closed hand follows a generous curve, so this handle will really feel natural and welcoming. With a band height of two and a half inches, two swallowtail fingers should make for a pleasing and graceful proportion. The oval box size that seemed to be the best fit for what I was looking for was a size number seven. Since I've never made one of this size before, there'll be a few tools that we need to create first. Using a CAD system, I created and printed out full-size templates for all the things that we'll need. You can find links to these in the notes below. We'll need a template for the number seven oval, a number seven swallowtail finger template, a sturdy form to bend the number seven bands, and plywood dryers to hold the shape of the bands as they dry after bending. All of the oval-shaped components are made from the same number seven hardboard template that I created. That way they're all the same size and consistent in shape. I use two by construction lumber to glue up a blank of sufficient size, making sure to scribe a line for the major and minor axes on the ellipse to keep the bands aligned while bending. A bandsaw makes quick work of cutting the form about an eighth of an inch oversized. A disc sander set to 90 degrees will enable you to accurately sand down to the line, being sure to keep the form sides square. Use a crepe rubber sandpaper cleaner to remove any buildup before the sander starts to burn the form surface. This will keep the sander cutting fast and clean it also extends the life of your sanding discs. For each band that you'll want to bend as you're making the carrier, you'll need a pair of what's called dryers. These are made from half inch plywood and are traced from the same oval template we talked about earlier. Two inch holes in the dryers make them easier to handle and allow for airflow to aid in the drying process. If you set your drill press depth stop to leave about a sixteenth of an inch of material at the whole bottom, only the point of the bit will protrude on the opposite side. That will give you a pilot hole to finish drilling from the previous side. This eliminates any chip out of the hole and leaves a really clean hole uh, on the back side. Head back to the bandsaw to rough cut the dryers in eighth of an inch oversized. The dryers need to have a negatively tapered side to act like a cork on the bands and most disc sanders aren't designed to tilt that way. By adding a couple of spacers to the existing angle gauge on my sander, it adds the length necessary for the negative seven degree angle that we need to sand to. Now when you sand to the line, your dryers will have the correct taper. While you could carefully lay out and cut each handle individually, I find creating a template for use with a router is faster and easier in the long run. Since the carrier handle length is longer than my laser printer can print out at full scale, I'll piece together two pieces of prints out, reversing one so that it's symmetrical. Here's a tip. Rub the back side of the paper with a paper towel slightly dampened with a parts cleaner called xylene. You can also use acetone. You can get the xylene at big box stores and it releases the laser toner from the paper transferring it to the wood. Just like before, cut wide of the line, then sand it to final shape. The handhold is created by drilling one inch holes at the ends, 
then by using a jigsaw to cut the remainder of the arch. The painter's tape you see on the saw's foot helps to protect the workpiece from marring. Again, cut prod of the line and then sand to final shape. To keep the workpiece securely in place, I prefer to use toggle clamps. You can get them fairly che cheaply at Harbor Freight, especially when they uh, issue their periodic coupons. Eventually, I may make divided carriers in other sizes. The handle would have the same profile, but would have different heights. Adding dowel pins to the jig means that I can use the same tool for all three sizes. Here you can see how the dowel pin holes are staggered to provide positive stops at the desired heights that I need. A couple of screws are all that's needed to secure the final toggle clamps. For the swallowtail finger template, you'll need something that's thin but rigid. Some people like to use metal, but I found that high pressure laminate, like Formica, can still be worked with hand tools and is durable enough to last for years. A combination of drilling, cutting on the bandsaw, and filing to the line completes the swallowtail finger template. And that will do it for all the tooling we need to produce our new number seven divided carrier. A solid form for bending, and dryers to hold the band shape. Remember, both of those are based on the same ellipse template so that they're always a consistent size. The finger template and the handle template ensure accurate repeatability of components with maximum efficiency and throughput. Be sure to tune in for part two of this series where we'll put all of the tooling we just made to work making the carrier. I know I can't wait. See you then. As always, thanks for watching. How about hitting the subscribe button so you won't miss any new videos and smash that like button if you really enjoyed what you've learned today. Now go make something great. You know you can do it.